Hey everyone, this one's going to be talking about how do we design at each different stage of production. So I hope you enjoy and find this one a useful one. Hey everyone, I hope you're well, playing on and making the games that you all love. You're joining me, your host, Principal Mission Designer, Max Pears. Absolute pleasure to be having you with me, whether it be morning, evening, or night. I appreciate your time. And kind of we going through, as I mentioned, kind of what a designer does, kind of each stage throughout the process. Now, we'll be dividing this up into roughly thirds for it, where we have pre-production, production, production and then kind of that of the closing part of the project as well. Now, there is, again, different stages. You can look at it, there's different terms, whether it be alpha, feature complete, beta, a lot of different ones. But my kind of one is kind of focusing when we're still in the very early stages, where we're kind of figuring out what the game is, what is it that we're after, elements like that really are the kind of the big things that I'm looking for. And then from that point there, what it is that we get involved in in that of the production itself, kind of focusing on those elements as well for it. Now, we'll go into firstly that of pre-production. Pre-production can range from a couple different things for it as us with designers. But first, let's have a quick word from today's sponsor. Today's sponsor is none other than me. What I've done, everyone, and I hope you're excited for this, is I've actually created a level design kind of store. What I've done in this store is put up different kinds of tips and tricks that you can find there, whether that be my actual ebook itself to that of level design pamphlets focused on different things such as traversal, stealth, breaking into the industry, as well as different talks that I have done which you cannot find anywhere else other than on this store. So if you are looking to improve on your level design skills and processes, then check out the level design store, which will be down in the description below where there'll be a link to find this. All you need to do is head over to gumroad.com forward slash level design lobby. I hope you like what you see and I look forward to hearing your thoughts. Thank you. And now back to the show. But the main thing is, is we're trying to experiment and figure out what it is that works best for our overall game, vision, all these different elements for it, right? And that for me is the really, really important part that when we're doing this is that you have a lot of freedom to experiment with this, right? That you're trying to discover what it is that makes great elements or actually great mechanics, great mission beats, elements like that, or how the mission is going to be laid out. You may have seen, the, I can't remember the name of the title now, but in GDC, that of Respawn had done and a designer from there had given a great talk on the aspects where they designed like a hundred different mechanics, tried them out, and then narrowed it down from there. And that's a huge undertaking for it. But that's kind of the elements that we're looking for, is we're pitching ideas, whether that's kind of the direction that we want the levels to move in, it's a fantasy game. Do we want to go more linear, open world? What type of open world do we want? Do we want something more traditional in that of the tower-based system of exploration? Do we want it more Breath of the Wild, Elden Ring, where we just let the player roam as soon as they get there? Or do we do some sort of gatekeeping with that of levels? Is that hard gatekeeping, soft gatekeeping? That's a really a tongue twister, as I'm saying. <laughs> but these kind of questions that we're trying to figure out and answer. And from that point there, we'll be experimenting to see how it feels for that. Now, alongside that, we may be discovering that of metrics as well. We might be switching from first person, third person, and then going through all of those aspects and going along to see, okay, well, what actually, what actually works for this? for it and then we'll be doing different gyms different elements for that where we'll have all these testing requirements for it, different aspects there as, as well that we'll be chasing from it and from there we'll be communicating with each other trying to get these items reviewed they'll sometimes get reviewed by either directors or leads or sometimes we'll just do an internal view with the actual team itself and discuss yay nay what is it from these kind of uh, points of views that we need to consider as well 
And I think that's a really important one for it is that you feel during this stage of, of the process that you have the freedom to go around and experiment with this. There will be strict things, as I've said, that are really, I don't know what you could say, boring, but more number-based is definitely that in terms of metrics, kind of how we do gating for it. And as I said, the reference with that of Respawn, the more kind of a freeing aspect would be designing all these different mechanics, looking at different ways to plot out that of a level, elements like that, on top of what we're doing for it. So that point of thing is a lot of, you can do documentation, I've seen prototypes, generally prototyping I think is the better way when it comes to that. Then we'll be looking at the actual process next, right? Well, how is it that we are going to do our designs, right? Are we going to have these different aspects of where, who needs to review it? How do we set things up? How do we communicate with one another? Because I'm sure that there'll be constantly LD switching over to different levels due to time and pressure that we have from all different aspects of development. The next we'll be thinking about kind of who's in charge of what aspect as well, right? Thinking that about if you're in that of a design team, who's going to be communicating more to learn from different aspects from different teams. You could have someone in charge of the AI communication for it, someone who's in charge of if it's a shooter, cover generation, how the nav mesh system works, all those elements on top, and making sure that we have documentation to help teach that of the system as well as possible newcomers that will be joining for that of the process as well. I really do strongly encourage that if you are in a team to create a quote unquote starter pack for that of your company as well. Starter pack can include like team structure, useful documentations, and then kind of like a design ethos and test. Oh, I say test, I don't mean actually testing that. I mean that aspect of going through and uh, giving them something once they've learned the systems, how can they actually ingrain that in their head that isn't just reading documentation, as many of you know, uh, reading is not the funnest aspect of making games, right? So creating those kind of ones can be important uh, for that. There'll obviously be post-mortems from that of previous games, if it's a new entry, or if it's from a different game that you've all come off and kind of talking about that. So it's really, as I said, these kind of aspects that are the important part for it. From that point as well, that really kind of covers pre-production on the kind of overall global scale. The next will be that of production for it. So from this now, we now know kind of the, the vision we're going for creating. So this is when we'll probably have that of uh, documentation on and pitching levels for it and then starting to actually create them. We now have the tools in mind. That's probably another aspect of pre-production. If you feel you are lacking, whether that's uh, certain tool pieces, for example, on going from Cyberpunk to Phantom Liberty, we had really great kit pieces that were awesome, but then at the end of it, we had a list of well, what else would have been more helpful, giving us a bit better freedom for it. So we went off and actually looked at what we could have added to these kit pieces as well and what kind of things could have helped to unify our blocking out, but also give us a bit more freedom. So we added like curved walls and a few other really nice pieces towards that as well. Sometimes you'll have a chance to learn different software. We got a chance to learn a bit of Blender. I know at Ubisoft we had a chance to learn a bit of Python as well. So it really depends again where you, you might even have some freedom in the pre-production side to uh, work on something that you think was a weaker element. I know some LDs who've gone off and worked on more their scripting technical ability versus that. Others who, as I said, learned more on using Blender, things like that. So it can be an, an opportunity for you with all that as well. We're in production now. So this is when we'll start actually making the levels themselves. Obviously there's different stages of production as we talked about, alpha, beta, content complete, gold is another term for it. But really the, the big thing for that with us is that we're looking kind of at the elements of taking that of one mission or multiple missions from start to finish, right? And that can go from the very first prototype. If you haven't, there's a great talk uh, by Blake, who's been on the podcast, who is a, I believe, principal or a senior uh, mission designer of Gorilla, and he did a great talk discussing that of like showing what they did for all the different aspects of design when it came to their pipeline, right? So the first time they played it, it was just like pop-up text bubbles. And then it was stuff starting to be added and then art came along it was a really great way of showing that but yeah you'll be starting from 
blocking out first iterations with uh, simple logic to actually seeing that it is there fully content complete for that, which is great. The one from that point then is obviously making sure you can actually flesh that out, make that better and better for it, and different aspects towards that. And from that point afterwards, we'll be kind of looking at kind of closing it up. So from production there, as we mentioned, it's about creating, actually making stuff that will make it into the game versus pre-production, which much more experimental, much more encouraging of say that of trying out new ideas, figuring out what the pipeline is, versus now executing on the pipeline, making sure that there is something that is tangible, whether that's playable or a certain mechanic within, and go from those aspects for the, for the next one, their team. At Lover Design Lobby, we believe everybody has a story to tell. Hobbyist or student, freelancer or veteran, we made it our mission to unite those who share our passion for creating and developing great games. Thanks to our generous Patreon backers, we've been able to do just that. So if you've already pledged your support, thank you. If not, you too can ensure the future of Level Design Lobby, helping us to create even more exciting content, collaborations, interviews, and much more. With awesome perks and rewards, whether you're a seasoned professional or just getting started, you're sure to find something for you. Want to share tips, tricks, and advice with passionate, like-minded developers? Our awesome community Discord has you covered. Fancy practicing your level design, creating strong portfolio content, and having fun? Then try our level design weekends. Or perhaps you want to individually discuss your work, hone your skills, or level up your career? Then consider our one-on-one -on -one mentorships. If you share our vision, then go to patreon.com forward slash level design lobby for more information and to pledge your support. Thank you. So those are kind of the big ones for that. From that point uh, after, we will then start to look towards that of finishing up with, I guess, wrapping up post-production, however you want to say it. But this is one of the biggest challenges and changes from where we were, right? Because at the end of the day, pre-production and production, they're the same because you're still constantly creating. You're looking to make something. This is not about that. I remember there was a, a, a moment in Division where my lead was going away, uh, I can't remember where he's going. I think it was some, uh, a business trip or something, but he made it avidly clear. Whatever you do, you're not adding anything more to the game now. What you're doing is just trying to fix, polish, that's it. Now, I got a little bit of trouble because I added uh, a couple things in the game, but <laughs> which is often referred to as ninja tasks. But the, the element for that always comes from trying to make sure it's cheap and it actually adds something to it. Like you get the most bang for your buck for it when you're you're actually implementing it and that is always the challenge to figure out and i see a lot especially with young designers and myself including when i was young now i'm old a withered hag but from that is really accepting you can't add those little extra bits you have to push the elements now of that of how do you make it feel better with the, what you have whether that's just making sure it's stable so there's no blockers involving it so you can play it all the way through making sure no one's floating or having elements like that that is probably the the biggest challenge that we can see a lot of people looking for for it really trying to figure out okay well how is it that we make this generally a, a better experience for it and what's really the challenge for it is, as I said, is understanding what you can do, what you can't do. And that's why it's really important to think about solution, think about cost, right? A lot of the time we're just thinking about trying to get buy-in to make something. But when you have to think about cost, when you're making this request, what else does it impact? Does it impact animation, audio, VFX, art, things like that, right? versus say can we repurpose an asset that we have and be able to use that we had it where uh, the one that i was talking about with the example of ubisoft came from the element of it was this kind of uh, defend the weapon cachet i believe it's along those lines where once you had approached it then this like red light would go on and then once it finished it would stop so that way you could get some visual, uh, you'd also have that of the UI, but we could get a visual representation in the game. And that was repurposing a light versus requesting a new asset that was out there, right? 
and that was a much quicker and easier way to fix for it. So thinking about that and thinking about trying to close as much as possible, what could be the most efficient way to fix these bugs and sharing that with your team as well for this? Because it's not just about that of fixing as many bugs as you can as the reality is you won't fix everyone, especially as games are getting bigger and bigger. But the reality is, is how are you able to fix the most and most efficiently for it? And that all comes from, again, taking the time to study, to speak to your teammates, and then seeing if teammates are having similar issues as well, right? So I think the, as I said, it's really the switching of mindset from having this huge vision in pre-production, experimenting to try to get as many ideas out there as you can, to kind of narrowing it down for production as we're making, and then closing it and narrowing it down even further to make sure that you are actually finished with this entirely. So again, it's I know it's broad strokes, kind of big overview, but I hope that it is something interesting there for you because I'm, I'm seeing a lot out there, but it is a huge difference. And I do notice that with uh, experienced designers versus newer designers, which is nothing wrong, but it comes with experience for it. And you'll see a lot of producers or leads mention that if people have come from a QA background to this, then it is a uh, an important aspect because QA have more experience in trying to closing things down versus some designers who are fresh out of uni and, and stuff like that. So it's something to, to think about and learning that as there is, and I do hate Steve Jobs very much, but he did have a very good quote, which was that of the aspect of there is a skill in closing, in finishing. And I think there is truth to that after all. It's always about us trying to make sure it can be the best it can be. And that doesn't always mean the most stuff within it. It can just mean that the quality that you are playing goes a long way too. So I hope you have enjoyed this. If you do want to get in contact uh, with me, you can leave a comment down below if you're watching this on YouTube, or you can email in to me over at leveldesignlobby at gmail.com, over on Twitter at Max Pairs. And if you want to support the show in any way, please head over to patreon.com forward slash leveldesignlobby. Thank you all. Take care. Have a great one. And I'll catch you all next time.